Welcome to the Connected Families Podcast. Good to have you joining us. I'm Stacy Bellward. Do you have a toddler that struggles to settle down to sleep or older kids that resist and argue with gusto about bedtime? Perhaps you thought sleep would be natural or that standard sleep training methods would lead your child to sleep through the night. Well, over the years, we have gotten many, many questions on sleep issues. And one thing is clear. There are many reasons sleep is difficult for children, and a one-size-fits-all approach can often lead to more struggle. Well, Lynn Jackson, the co-founder of Connected Families, wrote an ebook that we are releasing this week is to equip parents to wisely and insightfully work with their unique child to move towards better sleep for everyone. We're offering the ebook at a nominal fee. It's under $10 through our website. Check out our show notes for details. So as you can imagine, today's episode is dedicated to sleep and Lynn and I will be discussing a holistic approach to sleep and as always bringing practical tips that you can use today. So Lynn, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks. Good to be here. (laughs) Yeah. Lynn, did you get a good night's sleep last night? I got close to seven hours. Awesome. (laughs) Oh, good. I'm an eight hour girl. Well, it's just you and I today. We often have Jim, your husband, with us, but this sleep book is something that you spent a lot of time working on, haven't you? Mm-hmm, yep. And I got a little consultation that you'll read about in the book. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it was a lot of work. Because it is a book. It is 30 pages. This thing is meaty. It's got so many resources there. You spent a lot of time on it. So of all of the topics that we address at Connected Families, why so much effort on sleep? Sleep has just such far reaching implications that that we all kind of know, yeah, the kids are crabby the next day if they don't get a good night's sleep, but it really affects so many areas. And I've, I've read a book, Why We Sleep, that dives into that. It is a great book, especially if you have older kids to start to bring them into the science of sleep. It affects our coordination the next day. It affects safety and risk, memory changes dramatically based on the effectiveness of our memory changes dramatically based on how much sleep we've gotten. And then health, of course, it has huge implications. You even have a much better success at responding to a vaccine if you have slept well the night before. Oh, wow. It's like double. It's yeah. really amazing. And little tidbit for parents, it affects how people read each other's emotions. So if your kids don't get a good night's sleep, they are less able to discern emotions and they're more likely to read a facial expression as aggressive or intimidating or angry. So you know, then you think about, well, no wonder they're fighting so much when they don't get enough sleep is because they're seeing facial expressions differently. Interesting. Is this why my teenagers are extra crabby in the morning? (laughs) It might be. So maybe that's just like big smile Stacy, so they can't miss it when you see him in the morning. Oh, I love that. Understanding is so important, isn't it? When we have reasons why things are happening the way that they are, we can have so much more empathy and grace Mm -hmm. for the people around us. Oh, that's true. Well, I know the sleep topic is just, it's a hot one. If there's a lot of emotion and passion for parents, I know the parents have a lot of questions. So in preparation for this podcast, I actually put a question to our discipline that connects alumni group. So all of you in our community have probably heard about the discipline that connects with your child's heart online course. It's actually going right now. And so when people graduate from that, we have a Facebook group and that they can join and it's a beautiful community there. So I asked them the question, like what were their concerns around sleep? And one mom wrote this that I just thought probably typified a lot, a lot of people. She says, our concerns are settling to sleep on their own, not requiring parent presence to fall asleep, sleeping in their own bed, sleeping in their own bed for the whole night, not intentionally waking other siblings up to play in the morning or returning to bed after waking up after pre-dawn. And then she just had emoji, 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 emoji. She (laughs) says, a circus around here with our four kids who are three, five, seven, and nine. Lynn, we feel her pain, don't we? Oh, for sure. For sure. I certainly had sleep issues with our kids when they were little because they were lively ADHD type kiddos that they just did not want to settle down. It was like herding, not cats, herding monkeys into bed. (laughs) 
<laughs> and they just would rile each other up all over again as soon as I got them close. Jim often worked evening in his work with at-risk youth, so bedtime was often not a happy time around their house. <laughs> That's funny, Lynn. I know you had three kids, so you had three monkeys all over your house, didn't you? That's right. So yeah, I feel the pain of this mom and there's no easy solve, but as I read through her challenges, I think that there's things in in the ebook for her, for each one of the things that she talked about. So let's dive in. Yeah, let's dive in. So as you wrote this book, you took a holistic approach. Now we're going to cover a minute portion of this ebook today, but let's just do a high level um, look at what you did. So what I want to ask you is, could you explain just what you mean by a holistic approach and explain the portions of that? Yeah, it was looking at just the problem from a, a big, broad perspective and all the elements that can cause challenges. And then what do we move towards? What's the goal? Goal, not just what's the problem. So there'll be a section on the body, trying to help a child be calm and regulated. And that'll be about physiology and sensory function and melatonin and circadian rhythms and all the things that go into that. Mm-hmm. And then about a child's mind that we can move towards having a settled mind. And that'll be about providing like an auditory or visual focal point, decreasing their anxiety, increasing their general confidence. So they're not so scared at night, relaxation ideas, visiting at intervals, strategies for when kids wake up at night and then growing kids towards independence. So all that is covered in the the settled mind section. And then their heart, because when kids go to bed with a connected, secure heart, we're feeling connected and loved by their parents. It's so much easier for them to fall asleep. And that can be really hard for parents to to communicate. So we're going to take a thoughtful look at relationship and interaction how to do effective empathy and create an emotional tone that helps kids fall asleep. And then how to set limits in a loving way so that if if you have to set a limit, they still feel connected and secure. And then the final one is actually my favorite. It's about a spirit that knows they are loved by God. Sleep challenges are an opportunity to build a deeper sense of God's love and very real presence when kids are struggling. So we've got lots of creative ideas for you there. God wants to bless us with sleep. And so as parents lean into the spiritual component of it, they can really claim that their child would would learn more about God's love through this. So that's what I meant by holistic approach. Body, calm and regulated, mind, settled, heart, connected and secure, and spirit, loved by God. So I think I covered the bases. (laughs) Oh my goodness, Lynn, you did. And I know that's what our whole community loves about you. And when you tackle a topic that there's brain science in it and there's scripture in it and it's just addressing so many different perspectives even in questions that people have so in advance thank you for putting this together for all of us so let's start we're going to try to cover all four of those things in this podcast (laughs) today (laughs) I think I probably have too many notes (laughs) too many details that is my my challenge to not get my older in so many details. Let's try to cover body and mind before the break. And then we'll cover heart and spirit after. So in terms of a body, how can a parent promote calm and regulation to set kids up for success as bedtime approaches? Well, sleep is greatly affected by a child's daily experience. You've probably noticed yourself when you have a stressful day, you just don't sleep as well. So a child's day affects their night. So it it starts with looking at the anxiety and stress during the day, because that can set up fight or flight chemistry in the brain. And that affects cortisol or that stress chemical levels during sleep. And cortisol can substantially disrupt kids sleep. It feeds a cycle of needing and creating more or cortisol during the day just to stay alert. It's like they push themselves up into fight or flight to stay alert because they're so tired and then it's just a spiral. So there's lots of practical things that you can do with that, you know, to just get intense movement and get your kids outdoors at the beginning of the day. And I remember mom, she dealt with screen time issues in the summer by getting her kids outside to do a fun outdoor activities in the morning. But then they, they just were so much more settled and they didn't demand screen time. And I thought about it and I went, Oh, that's probably because they were sleeping better also, not just getting that outdoor boost. So that's an important thing. And we've got links for activities in the ebook that you can access to make sure you get your kids moving and having fun right away in the morning. And then the timing and the type of food makes a difference too. 
you know, don't send your child to bed either hungry or too full or on full of carbs or anything right before bed. Inconsistent bedtimes can make a big difference. But the thing that was fun to learn is about melatonin. And melatonin responds to light, which you probably know. It's like it drops down low when it's nice and bright out because it knows it's daytime and then it kicks in when it gets dark. But it also responds to temperature. Before we could keep our houses at perfect 72 all the time, our bodies were wired to learn that cool temperature means it's nighttime. So we should fall asleep better if our core body is temperature is low. I had no idea about this when our kids were little. When I put Daniel down to sleep as a little guy, he looked like he was ready to go out and play in the snow because because I had him dressed so warm. So, you know, there's tips about how to dress your kids, not like I dress Daniel. And then just a bedtime routine. It's really important because rhythm is calming and unpredictability is alerting. So the, the rhythm of a bedtime routine is an important thing in preparing kids to sleep. So we've got ideas in the ebook about sensory activities, massage, weighted blankets, all sorts of things. And then just working through sensory stress issues like our daughter would freak out when she had to sit on the cold toilet seat right before bed, you know? So I learned to warm it up with a blow dryer. <laughs> and then it was a calm experience and it didn't rev her up right before bedtime. Yeah. So just little practical things like that where you've got a good routine that is calming from a child on many levels, especially sensory. So I'm still back to the picture of one of your children going to bed looking like snowmen, like <laughs> ready to be out in the, in the winter. <laughs> It was ridiculous. My mother-in-law was like, what are you doing? And she was wiser than I on that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I got to make sure he's nice and warm so he can sleep. Lynn, you know this. I don't know if everyone in our community knows this, but I'm a missionary kid. So I spent a lot of years in Africa. And so that research strikes me as very Western. Just, I'm just going to say that because I know our audience and you know all of our community is all over the world. Right. There's places where it doesn't get cooler at night. It just doesn't. Yeah, but most places when the heat of the sun is gone, they do sure. cool down. Okay. And yeah. so for us, practically, that means let our kids go to sleep in less clothes. Yeah, lighter clothes. Good. Yeah, there's a lot of research about that. Lynn, that was just a lot of great points. Let's move on to the second part of the four areas that we're going through, which is holistic approach on sleep. So The times I have a hard time sleeping is when my mind is racing. I think that that's pretty common with most Totally, me too. (laughs) Yeah. So for kids, we hear a lot that anxiety and fear stops their sleep. This one feels really big to me, like as a parent, you know, how to address that. So where do parents even start in helping our kids to settle their minds? Mm -hmm. Well, a really good place to start is just be thinking in terms of when we're anxious, then we think, I I can't think about that. I got to stop thinking about, stop thinking about that. That drives our anxiety up. But if we've got something pleasant to focus on, Mm -hmm. that kind of relaxes. And it's like, oh, focus on something pleasant and calming. It's a lot about that, giving a child something else interesting to focus on. Dr. Roberto Olivardia who had ADHD himself, said that sleep is tougher for ADHD kids. And I think that would be broadly true for any kid that's intense and active and, you know, kind of prone to mind racing kinds of things. He said, sleeping is lying in a boring, dark room, waiting for nothing to happen. (laughs) And I shared that with our ADHD kiddos and they went, oh, totally. Yeah. (laughs) So it's tough doing that alone. And, you know, especially when you'd rather be with cool, interesting people like mom and dad. (laughs) Yeah. So, so it helps to have an interesting focal point and you can do that visually like a lava lamb. There's one parent used a glowing puppy she found online, but a really fun story is a fish. I inadvertently, and I won't bore you with the backstory, gave a fish that we couldn't care for anymore to a coaching client who had a child who had trouble sleeping. Okay. Just having that little swimming buddy with a little light behind him in the room with the child solved their sleep issues. Oh, wow. The problem was then the rest of the kids wanted a fish of their own too. (laughs) (laughs) So auditory stimulation and focus helps as well. What music works for your child? Dr. Olivardia said he needed like this intense, I don't know if it was heavy metal music, but he needed really intense loud music and then he could fall asleep. 
you know, most kids do lullabies and we've got some links for those resources in the ebook. Yeah. My kids loved Adventures in Odyssey, which is a product that folks on the family sells their, yeah. their stories. Uh -huh. you heard of those, Lynn? Oh, for sure. I have a coaching mom whose children have difficulty with sleep. And she said she would listen to those stories and she would stay, even though she knew the end, she would stay awake the whole time to get to the end. <laughs> so it was a little counterproductive for her, but you, usually that's really helpful. One of my teenagers still puts it on every night. Oh. I don't know. Is, is that something I need to fix? I don't no, 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 for sure. But lots of kids who have trouble sleeping have chronically heightened anxiety. Mm -hmm. The studies show they even have differences in heart rate compared to typical peers. So it's not just, I'm scared, mommy, may well be that there's really valid anxiety and their heart is, is racing. Our anxiety kind of normally elevates at night when it's dark. So, you know, it's really common for kids to struggle with anxiety. A great book, if your child is really struggling with that, is The Opposite of Worry by Lawrence Cohen. There's lots of practical things that parents can do as well, including like building their confidence through the day. You know, if your child spends the day feeling small, powerless, and ordered around by giant adults, it can feed their overall anxiety. And then that multiplies at bedtime. So there's lots of things that you can do and uh, talk about making the child the leader in things or power reversal play, funny stories where the child is the hero. So just kind of thinking in terms of how can I build my child's confidence through the day? And then there's specific things that you can do in the evening to calm that anxiety. We talk about there's relaxation techniques and the role of laughter and gratitude and, and all those kinds of things. So Lynn, I'm kind of thinking through that anxiety piece for mm -hmm. parents. So if their child is tends towards anxiety during the day, I'm trying to just understand what that looks like when they're laying in bed at night and they can't sleep. Is it specific thoughts in their mind around anxiety or is it just the general feeling of unsettledness, do you think? Oh, it can be both. Mm -hmm. You know, they can have the imaginary monsters under the bed kind of thing. And Cohen talks about that in his book, or it can just be that sense of, I just can't turn my brain off. I can't settle down. I, I just don't feel quite right. So it can take all sorts of forms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that, that makes it really tough for kids to just go, okay, bye mom and dad. <laughs> Right. So that's why one of the techniques that's, that's common, and I've had a lot of coaching clients have success with is to practice peaceful waiting during the day. And then at night visit at increasingly longer intervals. So you're visiting, you're going in, you know, kind of like smiling at the child and waving, not saying anything, giving them a thumbs up or, you know, and then just going back so that they know you're going to keep coming back until they fall asleep. And that can decrease that anxiety. So again, there's lots of practical how-tos about this teaching peaceful waiting and then the interval visits in the ebook. Again, the ebook packed with information. We're going to take a commercial break right now. And then after the break, we're going to cover the heart and the spirit. Parents, we have heard your cry. Sleep for your kids is a struggle, which makes it a struggle for you and the rest of your family. Lynn Jackson, co-founder of Connected Families, wrote a 30-page sleep ebook with contributions from Christina Spaeth Herrera, an occupational therapist also who specializes in sleep and sleep coaching. It's packed with practical information, research, scripture and brain science. Together they took a look at sleep from a holistic approach that will help you pull apart what is at the heart of the situation. This ebook is available for under $10 and it will give you loads of ideas and strategies to move forward. You know, Psalms 4, 8 says, in peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Do you feel like the mom who said, it's a circus over here? <laughs> we want you to know there is hope. We believe that the struggle of bedtime could change to becoming the dessert on your day. This sleep ebook is available now. You can find more information on how to get your copy in our show notes or go to the resources tab of our website, connectedfamilies.org. 
Okay, Lynn, we're back after the break and we have covered the body and the mind. So we have two left. We have the heart and the spirit. You say that a child's heart needs to feel connected and secure. Can you just talk more about that part? Yeah, it's, you know, this is really one of the hardest parts because parents at the end of the day are spent and exhausted and kids often perceive that, you know, maybe sometimes accurately as you don't want to be with me anymore. You're mad at me. And then they misinterpret to to be, you don't like me. And I'm not sure you love me. And, And then that causes that anxiety and it just spirals from there. So we help parents to take a look at the motions that they bring into it and some strategies about how to build connection and security instead of disconnection and insecurity. There were some coaching parents who had a key shift for themselves during a coaching session when I asked, what is your highest value? Is it the convenience of a quick bedtime or your child going to bed feeling connected to you? And that was a game changer for them. And they talked about just how that made all the difference. And they said, we've reduced our bedtime related conflicts by almost a hundred percent. Our three-year-old now falls asleep every night in a connected state. So this is a big issue. And there's so much about that we can do to strengthen that connection at bedtime. And it's really important because how kids go to sleep impacts how they integrate the memories of the day. So, you know, and that can impact how the following morning goes. So especially if you've had a tough day together, what you do to refresh yourself and then maximize your connection with your bedtime can help your child integrate the day's memories in a more positive way. So that explained a lot in our home, you know, if if bed was tough. So, you know, I help parents figure out how to empathize with their kids. Like one of the things that I did when our kids were struggling and I was hurting monkeys was I thought, okay, I need to step into their frustration about this. So I made up this song and we would sing it together as we'd march towards bed. And because it's a podcast, you get to hear the song because you can't hear it in the (laughs) ebook. So glad. What is it? I hate bed. I hate bed. It makes me want to throw up. I wish that I could grow up. I hate bed. I hate bed. And then we would repeat that as we go to bed. But it made them feel understood. It put some humor in it. Oh, I love that. Lynn, I have to back up a minute because when you ask that coaching family what their highest need was to feel connected with their kids, sending them to bed or just get them in bed. I am just thinking that there's some parents out there that are like, I'm done for the day. I just need them in bed. I know. You know, and so that could be an internal struggle. So can you give a little hope to that family about the steps to feel connected? Like, are you saying to them that if their goal is to be connected, I now need to spend an hour laying with my child in bed? (laughs) Oh, no, 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 no. No, that there's lots of practical ways that you connect quickly. It does start with just being honest before the Lord with that and taking just a few minutes to to try to refresh. And I love the phrase that I've heard recently of just embracing and going, you know, this bedtime, it's a moment of suffering for me and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And God is with me in it and he will help me to lean into the opportunity to build connection and security with my child and just acknowledge it for what it is, acknowledges the Lord's presence into it, and then lean into it. There's some practical ways that you can lean into God's presence for you Mm -hmm. and to decrease your child's anxiety. I love a suggestion about this from Larry Cohen's book, which may kind of inspire parents to be able to connect well. And that's to, to just empathize in a way that lands on your child. I know that being alone in the dark can feel scary and that's okay. I understand. Bedtime sometimes made me nervous when I was little. But as you get older, that scary feeling is going to grow smaller and smaller until one day it'll be all gone. And then smile at your child. And then this is the key phrase. Look in my eyes. Can you see that I'm not scared? And I love that. And it started my mind spinning. When I read that principle, I realized it's just like Jesus. He shares our tears of grief. He rejoices with our joy. He might even share our anger, but he's never afraid when we are. He always reassures our fears. 
Mm. So try to make your kids see that your face is not afraid and that they see a calm, loving face that represents the calm, loving face of Jesus. Mm. So hopefully there'll be enough practical things in the ebook that will begin to reduce the stress so that you can come with less frustration and exhaustion and begin to lean into that joy of being the face of Jesus for your kids. Which is going to lead so well into the last of the four areas we're covering. And that is the spiritual, right? So in the ebook, you talk about how bedtime provides a spiritual opportunity, particularly when anxiety and fear are present. Working with a child's emotional brain, not just their left brain, <laughs> they're, they're kind of concrete. Okay, let's read a Bible story, but helping them to enter into what God's presence might be. You know, what do you think Jesus looks like? And what do you think he smells like? The aroma of Christ aroma is very linked to our emotional center, our fight or flight center. And so it can be very calming. So talking about the aroma Christ, helping kids to choose a scent that they want to fall asleep with. It's just a little example. And then helping kids enjoy scripture. There is a mom that helped her kids to learn Isaiah 41, 13, for I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. She said, we memorized as a family. And when fears would bubble up during the day, we would hold up our right hand and say it together. The act of holding up our right hands was a helpful reminder that God promises to help us and he holds our hands. And then bedtime seemed to be a time when, when the worries and fears would bubble up and then we would return to that verse and it would help our sensitive daughter to feel safe. I would reassure her she was safe and very loved. And then she would repeat these verses that they had talked about and it would just be so helpful and calming. So that daughter is learning when I'm anxious, Jesus is right here. He's holding up my right hand. He's taking care of me. He's with me. And it's such a, a rich opportunity to bring faith into the, the nitty gritty stresses of life. And that just strikes me that you, we've now connected to some of the other areas we've talked about in this podcast, where you have been relieving anxiety throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you have been growing connection with your children, like between parents. And then even what I loved about that story is it's even between the siblings. They're all doing it together. We're yeah. all doing this together. Isn't that beautiful too? Yeah. That's I love that story. Uh -huh. That we go to the Bible for truth and help. And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And when we have problems to solve, I love that. That's really, really good. Lynn, anything else on this creating, using bedtime as an opportunity for spiritual growth? I think it's just a good time for parents to hear what's on their kids' hearts and to be an example of the listening heart of God mm -hmm. and that he is always there to listen to us. And there are those kids that they're, they're in fight or flight all day. And then it's nighttime that they open up and that can be like, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? Stop talking, just go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But to recognize again, we're representing who God is to our kids. So maybe building in that little bit of extra time or at least writing down the things that they share about and saying, I so want to listen to this when my brain is working really well, because I really care about what you have to say. So I'm going to write a post-it note right now and put it on the fridge. And we'll talk about this tomorrow over a smoothie or something where you're representing, you really want to hear your child's heart. Even if you're exhausted, that special moment is used to build a bond and represent how God just listens to us mm -hmm. anytime we need. Oh, I love that. And let me just say, I've got two teenagers and it is true. When, all <laughs> told me before, when my kids were little, they do start talking at 1030 at night. There's just, it's, it's a fact. Everybody get ready for it. If you're not there yet. <laughs> Like but boy, is hard. that a good thing compared to, you know, if your teenager just shuts the door and says, I don't ever want to talk to you, mom. So exactly. savor it, Stacy. <laughs> That's right. I do. I savor every moment of it. I just, I just love it so much. It's, it's fantastic. Today, Lynn, today's episode was so rich, Lynn. And I know that ebook is really rich too, with resources and information. So I said it before, but thank you so much for putting all the work that I know that you did into it. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. It was just something that the Lord put together. It was like, all of a sudden I had all these coaching clients and it, it could have been what our country was going through at the time, but I had all these coaching clients with kids that were struggling with sleep. And I just felt like God was teaching me stuff mm -hmm. all along the way. Cause I wouldn't have considered it like a specialty area of mine before that, but it just really, I felt like the Lord orchestrated it. So I'm so excited to finally get it out to parents. Good. Well, thanks Lynn. You're so welcome. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in and listening to the whole show. Now go take a nap. <laughs> That's what we all want, right? The sleep ebook that Lynn and I were discussing today is available now. Just go to our show notes for a link or go to our website, connectedfamilies.org. You will find it under the resources tab. There's also a whole bunch of free resources there, you guys. So check those out too. Well, that's it for today. Coming up in the next few weeks, we have a two-part series on raising overcomers. We'd love to hear from you. Share a comment letting us know what has been the most helpful thing to you. And please subscribe and leave a review so that other families can find us and learn how to parent with peace and connection. For more information on Connected Families, go to connectedfamilies.org. 